Hello everybody, welcome back to the internet's best reactions. Today, it's Imola. It's the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. I am flabbergasted as to what I have seen over the last, what feels like three weeks. I think it was more about two and a half hours overall, but I am still recovering as to what's gone on. And I think you guys are too, but you had some amazing tweets as always. Before we get into the reactions, I know you guys love this series and I thought I should do a shout out and say please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this series or our F101s or our podcasts and all the other content that's coming out for this Formula 1 season. I know some of you aren't subscribed and I'd love to have you in the WTF1 family, so please click that red button, that subscribe. Love ya! Okay, let's begin at the very beginning where we always start with At Sad Bow. POV, Hamilton taking the curb in turn one. Of course, we had a wet start to the race. We had people going off before the race had even begun. It was just showing the treacherous conditions around Imola, which, to be fair, you know, coming up to, you know, sort of race week, Monday, we're thinking, oh, there could be some rain. And then throughout the, uh, the week, a little bit more hype as uh, it, it continued to be there. But then as we went into Sunday, it looked like it wasn't going to rain. But then the heavens opened. And we got a wet start. So, of course, Hamilton got a great start. Uh, but Verstappen was alongside, absolutely flying. Apparently he started in second gear. And so he was up the inside going into turn one. And then, you know, you just know that clip of them going side by side in slow motion is going to be used for the rest of, of time. Uh, especially with Netflix, I'm sure. Uh, but, of course, you know, that incident... A lot of, some people were saying, no, was it a bit argy-bargy from, uh, from Verstappen? But that's what you expect. Max isn't going to go, no, please, no, please, no, no, come through, Lewis. No, 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 I don't mind if you come back at me up the inside. It's never going to happen. Of course, he's going to, in the wet conditions as well, just close the door. And that's what happened. And I'm surprised Lewis hung it round the outside because you just kind of knew with the curbs as well, it was destined for a bit of damage. At Formula e 1, what the Imola GP feels like right now, it was... One of those races where you just needed more than one camera angle. You needed about four. But the problem is we can't then absorb what's going on. The problem with Formula 1 is you won't be able to absorb everything that's going on on lap one. But it just seemed to continue. I genuinely, and I know I do apologise sometimes for forgetting things, but this genuinely feels like an entire season's worth of drama in half a race because the the restart there was you know not as much but that first half lap 34 we had the red flag I mean, so much going on so i apologize if your favorite driver spun and i don't talk about it because it was chaos at F1 needs more rain. Everyone when Mazepin crashes and isn't the first has to spin. Of course, this is alluding uh, to what feels like a century ago when Latifi went off at Aqua Minerale, then came back on the track and Mazepin made contact with Latifi and Latifi was, of course, out of the race. Some people wanted to jump on the bandwagon to, to blame Nikita, but you just can't. It was absolutely not his fault in the slightest. Uh, and Latifi just kind of rejoined and didn't really think about the Haswood that was on his right. So, yeah, it was a... Uh, well, I guess a racing incident, but definitely Latifi's fault. <laughs> this is a good one. Samuel 21 French, trying to watch through the spray like. You could tell Crofty in particular, if you watch it on Sky, was genuinely like this, uh, where, where he just didn't really know what was going on. He was going to go, oh, okay, Hamilton, yeah, Verstappen. And then it, you could just see the amount of spray that was on the screen. And to be fair, you know, that camera angle was yeah a little bit questionable. And, Overall, the race direction for this weekend just didn't feel particularly on it, in my opinion. There were there was a lot of moments looking at the midfield where, OK, they were close, but then you had a, a battle for the lead or you had a battle for, you know, between uh, Ricardo and Norris. So I felt like the direction was a little bit off this weekend uh, and I'm hoping they, they pick it up again uh, in a couple of weeks time. Now, there were so many spins, so many crashes. Uh, we're going to go on to another one now. James Lewis, 21, comes in with Schumacher crashes on the pit straight. That was embarrassing. And of course, just it shows that that Haas is difficult to drive. So, you know, there's no there's not saying that Mick isn't struggling as well because he has had his uh, a few errors. But fortunately for him, hasn't completely ruled him out of either the session or the race. And uh, yeah, he was weaving pretty hard and quite an embarrassing thing as well, because that he couldn't pit because the pit lane was closed. And yeah, so he was just kind of toodling around with a front wing that was just, well, pretty much gone. And there was some wires and yeah, it wasn't a good look for Mick. Uh, and this uh, this tweet sums it up. Nuanced humour. Mick Schumacher waiting for the pits to open. Poor guy. An embarrassing few laps, but 
look, come on, he's he knows that he's in a pretty terrible car, and it's it's a learning phase for him, and it's it's good because he's never been quick uh, in in the first season of many of the sort of top flight formula that he's been in. So, yeah, this this first year is learning how to drive an awful car. Avoiding TMRW tomorrow. Five laps in and it is full on. Look, everybody was coming in with it. So I had to just kind of reinforce what I was thinking by adding some of these tweets in because it was chaos. Absolute chaos. You had Perez that, you know, was not quick really at all in for most of the race, to be honest. Of course, he had a few mistakes later on. But when you look at the, the start, you kind of think, oh, you know, starting on P2, maybe good chance. Obviously, then he fell back because Verstappen overtook him. But the pace just wasn't there, was it, for Sergio? And Imola's a difficult track. It was treacherous conditions. Qualifying was uh, was a positive for him. The race was certainly a negative, as was Valtteri Bottas that I'm sure we'll come on to. At VD Pieta VDBRG, Verstappen, I'm the Mercedes now. <laughs> I felt a little bit sorry for Max in the sense that, you know, he kind of built a gap. Then there was a safety car, built a gap, red flag, built a, you know, he kept building these gaps and then it just getting completely wiped off the face of the earth. And, uh, but it was a really solid performance from Max, it has to be said. You know, he uh, he got an amazing start. And the fact that he even used that second gear off the grid and things like that, you know, he's thinking outside the box to try and get an awesome start. And it just works for him. And I'm so excited to see who comes out on top between Lewis and Max. Obviously, the inner Michael Schumacher fanboy is hoping Max comes out on top just purely because I want Michael Schumacher to be regarded as the at least equal goat in terms of world championships but I feel like it's inevitable that Lewis will eventually get an eighth unless he randomly retires at the end of this year uh, but Max he's he's on one he finally believes he can win a world title and that turn one actually technically turn two lap one incident just showed what that he means business at Joshi 60190716 of course we did mention Sergio Perez uh, that moment when Perez gets a stop and go that was an odd incident, wasn't it? I, it's funny because the, the tweets that I've liked, of course, are usually my sort of catalogue of tweets that I'm going to include in Internet's Best Reactions. But I genuinely feel more now than ever. Uh, it's actually telling the story of the race. I'm going, oh, yeah, that happened. Because obviously Perez had that, that little spin uh, whilst the safety car was out, had a little whoopsie, uh, lost a couple of positions and then just took the positions back which is just, it's just not how it works. It was clearly a bit of desperation to get back there. Maybe just hope that the stewards didn't see. I'm not sure. Maybe he just forgot exactly what the ruling is. But of course, safety car, no overtaking under the safety car. It's simple. Oh yeah, another tweet that just reminded me of something that happened. At Sean Regan 97 when AlphaTauri finally changed Gasly off the wets. That was an odd situation, wasn't it? Of course, you had that, that sort of middle not middle ground but it was a decision between whether to go on the intermediates or the wets at the start of the race i think only three maybe four actually you had gasly ocon and the two hasses that went on the wets and you just think gasly had such a good qualifying session i can understand rolling the dice if you're a yuki Sonoda, for example and you're starting at the back of the grid but what i don't understand that the risk that gasly took from p5 maybe they just wanted to win and they've just thrown caution to the wind and hope for the best but for me, P5 is such a good position to start in a wet race where it was chaotic. And, and he could have easily been where Lando Norris was at, at the end of the day. Oh, goodness me. Uh, this one, uh, well, uh, preceded unfortunate events. At Ulmer underscore Ted, Russell in the points on merit. Well, the Williams in general looked awesome this weekend, didn't they? They uh, were, were quick in qualifying. I think it was 12th and 14th uh, for Russell and Latifi. Then, uh, then the incident happened, which I know I have tweets for, so we'll get onto that shortly. Oh, this was a good tweet about the Gasly wet situation at born at Friday 13. <laughs> I think I forgot something. Oh, poor Gasly on the wets. Honestly, they left him out for so long. At one point, it was like eight seconds a lap slower. Like if it just threw away his entire weekend. And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a shame because Gasly has shown great pace. Of course, he drove into the back of Ricardo in Bahrain. But just generally, it hasn't been a good start for Pierre. Some may be his fault, i.e. driving into Ricardo, but others just completely out of his hands. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe he had a call on that and went for the wets as well. But yeah, it was uh, it was a risky one. So, of course, Lando ended up on the podium. Amazing result for him. But uh, he, he didn't have the easiest starts. He had uh, contact with Stroll, I think, at the beginning. At name Rizvi, Lando, after being allowed to pass Ricardo, of course, he got behind Daniel Ricardo, and he was pretty much getting held up and you know you hear the team radios all the time don't you going oh no you know if I get if I get past yeah I'm gonna go at least four minutes a lap quicker you never believe it do you but as soon as Lando was uh, was let through uh, from Danny Rick he just flew away 
the next thing you look, he was like eight seconds down the road. So it was a good call from McLaren because they may not have got that podium had they not done that. Now, you know, I mentioned about the F1 direction being a bit off. This was another bit of a whoopsie, I suppose. At Camunez, the camera's showing the wrong pit during Verstappen pit. They just showed an empty pit box. <laughs> I don't think we've... Well, I can't remember a time where we've uh, where we've seen that before. So, a bit of an odd one. It just, it just felt like... You know, start of the season, you know, just rock up, stick some cameras on. Of course, they had, they had the problems in FP1 as well, uh, where we just didn't get any insights or onboards or whatnot. So, yeah, there was problems uh, for the for the for, for Formula 1. Uh, it's a bit of a shame, really. But apart from that, you know, we can we can still admire how good the race was. At Jordan GB24, both Mercedes crash and Imola. Netflix. There are some good Netflix tweets uh, this week. <laughs> so, of course, they were, I think, filming Sonoda at one point. Of course, they'll do bits and bobs of filming uh, throughout the weekend. But, oh, Mercedes, of course, you had the Hamilton incident, which we haven't even spoken about yet. You've had Bottas and Russell crashing. And Netflix are just licking their lips uh, because you just know some of those storylines that are coming out of Imola. They are just ferociously writing them down <laughs> as we speak, probably. So let's talk about the George Russell Valtteri Bottas crash uh, and let's begin it with at Tanmay Jube. Williams looking at the expenses after the Imola Grand Prix. Of course, Williams is a struggling team still, even though they're, you know, they're moving forwards on the grid. You have to, you have to say they're still financially struggling and the, and the crashes from Latifi and Russell would not have helped that at all. But the actual crash itself, you have Bottas and Russell. How am I saying that in the same sentence? Bottas and Russell fighting. Bottas's pace. If I talk about Perez's pace that was bad, Bottas was absolutely nowhere. Like, no, I don't know what he was doing. Um, is, is just was just completely off the pace. Couldn't even pass the likes of Lance Stroll. Fell off the back of some of the midfield and then had Russell on the back of him. Then you had, of course, they were kind of side by side going towards, towards turn two. And... I did tweet saying that it was probably more Russell's fault than Bottas's. After looking at it a few more times, I feel like it's still at least 50-50, if not a little bit more on Russell's side, just purely because he dipped a wheel on the grass. Of course, Bottas did jerk a little bit, but I still think it's more George's responsibility to not crash in that situation. He's the overtaking car, right? So that was a big, hefty crash. And I thought Bottas was injured because of the way he was just sat in the car for so long, probably just winded. Uh, and then they had that incredible altercation where they just were, well, Bottas was swearing at Russell. Russell was kind of slapping him on the head. Yeah, you just know that's going to be a Netflix storyline, don't you? <laughs> at Fusion Gamer J1, Russell to Bottas after the crash. Sums it up perfectly, doesn't it, really? And away from the incident, but more about George Russell, just generally at Imola, at Holland's Flicker, George crashing while running in the points in Imola. Oh, every time, of course, George does have points to his name, don't forget, because of Sakir, and uh, even though he didn't win the race, which he should, definitely should have, he still has points to his name, but none for Williams. And you just know that Latifi, is, who had a decent weekend, at least in qualifying, bit of a rubbish one, of course, ending up in the wall for the race, but he's, he's picking up his pace a little bit more. It looked like maybe he was going to out-qualify George, but obviously didn't in the end. Uh, so you just know that Latifi is going to just get a point somewhere and be the first Williams point scorer since obviously Robert Kubica uh, back at the is it 2019 German Grand Prix. So oh, George, just come on. Every time he, get, he just gets into P10 and everything goes wrong. At Battery Voltas, there's another one. I forgot there's another one for, for Russell and, and Bottas. <laughs> Netflix seeing Russell and Bottas collide to create fake drama for that Mercedes seat. I don't know. Yeah, of course, you know, Netflix does hype up a lot of things. Don't get me wrong. You know, they do... There were some things in the in the latest season that were just not accurate at all. And you, you do think that this will obviously be some sort of factor. But maybe there is some drama. You know, Russell knows that that seat hopefully will be his at some point. But whether it'll be Bottas's, whether it'll be Hamilton if he retires, who knows? Maybe there is drama behind the scenes. We don't know. At Josh Russ 493 uh, we've got some insight actually to Toto Wolff's office. Live scenes from Toto's seat in the Merc garage. I, I think he'll be repairing some of that, of course, after Hamilton. I don't even know how he ended up in the wall there. Of course, you know, he was lapping back markers, went onto the wet patch uh, at this sort of left hairpin. Can't remember what the name of the, the corner is there. You know, I only remember <laughs> a few of them like Aqua Minerali and Variante Alta. They're the only two that stick in my head. Anyway, 
I think he'll be at least, you know, he'll be reasonably happy with, with Lewis's performance considering he was in the wall reversing at one mile an hour after like a minute and he was a lap down. So the fact there was a red flag, a reset and Lewis got back to P2, of course, Valtteri out the race. I think Toto will be okay. It's, you know, it's a, it's a bad day at the office, but it's still a podium. Who has won Tweet of the Week? Right, we're here at Tweet of the Week and, well, this one is... <laughs> It's simple, but effective, because I can hear it in my head, this GIF, uh, so it's just perfect. So it comes from William underscore NZDE, Netflix looking at the Bottas versus Russell incident, jackpot. <laughs> I love how I kept saying there was no more Bottas Russell memes, and then I just keep scrolling up, and there's another one. There's so many GIFs and memes and reactions from you guys, thank you so much once again for getting involved in this series, because without you, it wouldn't exist, and you're all legends. Right, I'm trying to keep up with everything. I, I know I haven't included everything, so I am sorry once again. But, you know, crazy race. Uh, we're going to continue now from the last restart, which was after the red flag, which was, of course, because of the Bottas Russell incident. And I thought it was going to be a standing start. It wasn't. I don't know the exact reasoning behind that. Maybe it was because it was a damp track and everyone's on dries. Who knows? But still, I mean, Brundle wasn't particularly happy with it either. And I wasn't either. I love to see a standing start. It's a bit more jeopardy that way. Anyway, it's at Sim Siri C. <laughs> that was really bad pronunciation. Max's mirrors right now. Lando went for the soft tyres, which I was kind of... I was thinking to Mc about McLaren's strategy choice there. It was a bit weird, you know... Everyone else was pretty much on the mediums, but Danny Rick and Lando went, went for the soft tyres. They were quick at the start, of course, fired up really quickly. And at one point, obviously got past Charles Leclerc up to P2, Lando Norris. And then he was about six, seven tenths behind Verstappen. And I was going, what is going on here? Is Lando about to try and challenge the Red Bull whilst those soft tyres are working? Of course, that didn't happen. And uh, Max fired up. But overall, you know, I mean, Max's mirrors were like that for maybe one or two laps. But after that, he just checked out, did Max. And, and Lando held on to a podium, which is just fantastic. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, so before that actually happened, of course, we had the Verstappen nearly spinning, trying to get some heat in the tyres. It... All the drivers, or at least most of them, if well, I'm pretty sure all of them, were struggling at some point during the race. And I love to see it at Edgar Alejo 97. Max almost crashing before the restart. My heart jumped. So did mine. I couldn't believe how sideways his, he was. And to be fair, Lando fans, you may not want to listen to this, but who knows where Lando could have got, you know, or he could have at least led for a little bit. Who knows what would have happened? Could Hamilton and Verstappen have battled? We don't know. It's a completely different dimension. But wow, it's... Uh, oh. You, you just, that's the beauty of Formula One. Just not knowing what's going to happen. Oh, God. Yes. Two weeks. Only two weeks to the next one. Not three. Phew. At Carpo 91, Hamilton after that restart. Of course, we saw Bottas in the first half of the race really struggle to get through on cars. And in fact, dropping backwards. And I feel like it's a little bit of an unfair comparison because, of course, Hamilton was coming through with DRS. It was drier. You know, the car's performance comes out a lot more then. I'm not giving any sort of excuses to Valtteri because he should have definitely been making progress. Uh, but Hamilton, you know, he was he was flying through the field and you did kind of wonder whether he'd be able to get to P2 because, you know, Imla's a bit of a, an unknown in the fact that, you know, can he get through? Does he have the performance advantage that maybe he didn't have last year? But... Yep, he still got through, P2, and uh, yeah, he kind of scythed his way through the field, and, you know, I was hoping maybe he'd stay behind Charles Leclerc, of course, you know, just passionate, not a fanboy, uh, but, you know, of course, he got through, and uh, it was a good day, good day out for Ferrari, so it's just things that pop into my head, I'm like, oh, I haven't even spoken about Ferrari, and Carlos Sainz going off 800 times in the first 20 laps, of course, coming over the team radio and complaining about, you know, <laughs> is he going to make any more mistakes th uh, today, and he finishes fifth, oh, I need to lie down. And to sum up the last 10 laps at Kath underscore Brislane, probably runner-up for Tweet of the Week, the last 10 laps for Stappen, Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton. I did think to myself, if Verstappen conks out here or has a problem, we're going to have an almighty fight for P1. Of course, we didn't. And I'm glad Max won because we're going to get a, a close title fight. Uh, but, you know, you, can, you, can, you can't help but think these things. And, well, it was a good last 10 laps. Right, social media team championship time. Now let's dive straight into it. The top three from the Imola Grand Prix. Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. In third place, we have Mercedes AMG F1. He was a skater boy. Toto Wolf, is there anything that man cannot do? Well done, Mercedes. One point. In second, we've got an amazingly wholesome uh, tweet, which I actually saw, didn't we, when we were watching the, the F1 broadcast. It was Lando taking that picture for the McLaren socials. Let me take a selfie. Well done, McLaren F1. Two points. And finally, the winners 
from the Social Media Team Championship for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Ah, Alfa Romeo Racing. This was so good. I only caught a glimpse of this at some point. I'm so glad I saw it because it's brilliant. Uh, and of course, it has a dog in it and it's an, a, a beautifully edited gift. So well done, Alfa Romeo. That's one point for Mercedes AMG F1, two points for McLaren and three points for Alfa Romeo Racing. Right, race run down time now. I just despise this so much because it just doesn't come out my face. And yet some of you, I know some of you hate this. In fact, just skip the segment. But I know some of you love watching me fail at reading. So here we go. The finishers of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix were Verstappen Hamilton Norris. Verstappen Hamilton Norris. Verstappen Hamilton. Verstappen Hamilton. Okay, right. No, this is like full focus. If I if I don't do this, I'll die. Wow, my eyelids twitching. That's weird. I just said that, and I said I'm going to die. Oh my god, am I not going to? Am I going to die? Anyway, Verstappen Hamilton Norris. I'm going to die. I'm dead. Good. Verstappen Hamilton Norris Leclerc. Signs for Carlos Stroll. Gasly Raikkonen knock on Alonso. Verstappen Hamilton Norris Leclerc. Signs for Carlos Stroll. Gasly Raikkonen knock on Alonso. Alonso. Verstappen Hamilton Norris. Verstappen Hamilton Norris Leclerc. Signs for Carlos Stroll. Gasly Raikkonen knock on Alonso. Perez Snow. The Joe Latsy Vettel show. Maka Mazepin. It'll do, I don't care. Just get it out the door. Boom. And the non-finishers were Bottas Russell on the TV. Bottas Russell on the TV. I love how Vettel, by the way, he pulled into the garage and still beat the two Hasses because technically he's classified. So there you go. Boom. <laughs> right, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching the internet's best reactions to the Imola Grand Prix. It's been an absolute barnstormer of a race. Thank you so much. Firstly, to Fanatec for sponsoring this series. It's brilliant and we've given out amazing prizes throughout the entire season. So make sure you go and check them out. And uh, also for you guys for getting involved, hashtag WTF1 on social media if you want to get involved next time uh, for the next race in two weeks in Portimao. That should be a really exciting one as well. And that's it. We'll see you soon for some more content. We've got the podcast going out tomorrow. We've got all sorts of F101s in the pipeline. Look forward to it. Love you all. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.